What's happening, guys? So, with the Hurricane Inline 6, the standard output now being widely available for the Ram 1500 and soon to be available for the Charger, well, it's got a lot of gearheads really worked up thinking about what kind of power they could get out of that engine, and rightfully so. There's a long history of six cylinder turbo engines that are making big power, so could there be some limiting factors for the standard output six? And unfortunately, yes, there's gonna be one fairly significant limiting factor, and that is the pistons. Guys, the standard output Hurricane uses hyperutectic pistons. The high output variant uses forge pistons, far and away better for making big power. But the hyperutectic pistons are what the standard output comes with. Now, it's not necessarily a deal breaker in terms of making more power than the engine is already making, but you're gonna be limited as far as how much more power you can push through. And it really has more to do with cylinder pressure than anything else. Consider this. A three liter standard output Hurricane is making 420 horsepower. A six liter with the same cylinder pressure would be 840 horsepower. And 840 horsepower is about what the outgoing red eye would make and that block utilizes the forged pistons. So already we're not seeing that same consistency. I mean, we are looking at cylinder pressures, which may kind of need, at least from a warrantability standpoint, a more robust piston. Now, plenty of people have used standard Hellcat engines to make well over a thousand horsepower, and those are hyperutectic pistons. So maybe we can take that kind of a model and look at that Hurricane, the standard output, and just extend to it that same courtesy. Let's say that that Hurricane could make mm, 550-ish horsepower, maybe as much as 600 at the flywheel before the pistons became the limiting factor. Now, obviously the fuel system and other components are gonna need to be augmented to be able to manage that type of power. But realistically though, at that power level and well, presumably at a much higher torque level, you're gonna start to reach the limits of a lot of components downstream from that engine, namely the HP75 transmission. So I think that with the standard output engine, once tuning becomes available and it's not quite available yet, but once it does, and fuel systems are made available that will manage a power level that will get you into that 550, maybe even 600 horsepower range, I think that's where I would limit that. And also, I gotta say this, when it comes to fueling that engine, remember that you're fueling an engine that's making somewhere around 24 pounds of boost. Now, that is a lot of boost. And in the V8 realm, typically, and you'd be running E85 with numbers that would look anywhere close to that. So um, definitely a switch in fuel would help things out a lot, but personally I would consider it almost mandatory a move to E85 just because it's a much more forgiving fuel. And quite frankly, at those types of cylinder pressures, small knock events, well, they can have extreme, ex <laughs> extreme results um, if not put in check. So a uh, move to E85, probably a good idea um, if big power is something that you're trying to get out of one of those engines. Now, also keep in mind that engine's coming to the party with a little bit higher compression than the high output variant. So there's gonna have to be some considerations with tuning and knock thresholds and things of that nature, but that's stuff that can be worked out. Um, but it is going to be more of a challenge to push that engine farther without piston disintegration uh, than it will be the high output. The high output, on the other hand, <laughs> as long as you've got a fuel system and boost, if it doesn't lift ahead, that thing will keep making power until it pops. So I'm not so concerned with that engine, but with the widespread availability of that standard output, there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to try to get the most out of that combination early on once tuning does become available, I would say let them get the kinks worked out of that first. But once it lands, I think it's gonna be a winner. And I think that as long as you're not being greedy with the way that that thing is gonna make power, 
keeping it around say 550 on gasoline and say maybe 600 on corn, I think you'll come away with a very robust, very reliable combination that will last a long time and put a lot more smiles on your face than you might initially give it credit for. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Post up your comments. Let me know what you think. We'll catch you on the next one.